everyone um this is a session for english i hope everybody has joined um so this is uh, regarding tools of um, uh, english language uh, learning but my observation the tools that we have um, worked with uh, that are online or app based uh, mostly uh, they are uh, paid and mostly our schools also do not have infrastructure enough to work with these kind of tools so what i've decided is uh, to talk about um, online tools that are all free and um, helpful for teachers to um, guide their students so they can guide them about these tools or use these tools themselves and um, um, so let us start with so i'll um, uh, talk about all aspects um, which is um, listening speaking reading and writing and cover uh, a few important um, tools and websites that are there at our disposal for free and um, the resources that are um, widely freely available that are authentic and that are good and um, also uh, how to use them and also i always start with the rider that technology is um, uh, no real substitute for uh, learning language it's just an enhancement tool where uh, you get various platforms to uh, practice otherwise um, as teachers you also know that especially english which is a derivative of uh, multiple languages is, is a very practice based uh, language and uh, which is why uh, reading and writing and speaking and listening on one's own is uh, very important so uh, these tools are just aids the more um, we practice the better we learn all right so i'll share my screen and we'll go through some interesting websites and tools Just a second. Some problem with sharing. Hmm. There's some problem with sharing because I'm not using the app. I'll have to, I think, log out and log in. Please give me a minute. I'll log in through the app and then. Screen sharing might be easier. All right, let's try again. <clears throat> Can't share my screen, Monica. Can you see? It says. Uh, my screen sharing is um, disabled. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, <clears throat> while um, uh, that gets sorted, uh, I can just um, talk about things and then we can see. Um, is it sorted? Um, while it gets sorted, we can talk about things uh, which we don't need screen sharing for. So, um, <clears throat> podcasts are something that are very um, interesting to improve one's comprehension skills as well as listening skills. And uh, the more standard uh, podcasts that you uh, go through. And podcasts have their own um, following, even in the age of um, um, social media and all that. There's a lot of people who listen to uh, podcasts and there are lots of good podcasts out there. They help you um, tune your ear to different kinds of accents, especially because most of these websites are podcasts are American or British. So one gets uh, attuned to that, um, those sounds, those intonations as well. 
as well as um, uh, comprehension skills um, of um, uh, following it without subtitles and being able to understand, as well as the content is of uh, very good uh, quality and uh, the various kinds of discussions about um, uh, different topics. And um, so uh, it also, uh, apart from listening and comprehension skills, it's also a good platform to learn how to debate and um, how to think about topics in a concise and um, uh, brief fashion. So, um, um, let's see if screen sharing is possible. Screen um, sharing sir, is still not possible. Hmm. Sir, we have detected the issue. Just give us a few minutes. Um, we are providing okay. you co-host rights. Okay, okay. Cool. Till then, I can just talk. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, the best podcasts to uh, listen to are BBC Six Minutes. So, if you just Google BBC Six Minutes on your uh, laptop or phone, you'll, you'll get it. And BBC has a lot of, uh, um, both BBC and British Council have lots of um, um, free content. So, BBC Six Minutes packs... Um, um, a lot of information about contemporary um, topics. I'll just look at my own screen and see what, what it shows up and tell you. So if you just Google BBC Six Minutes, um, it's, it's very good six minutes packages so one doesn't get bored also. And it also shows uh, um, skills of um, um, precision, um, some uh, summarizing things and how to uh, present your thoughts in a very concise manner. So, for example, right now on BBC Six Minutes, we have um, topics like should we farm octopus, ways to live for 100 years, how green is your money, um, which means um, uh, the money that you're earning and spending, uh, what is the carbon footprint on it, what kind of things uh, do we uh, buy, and how do we earn our money? Uh, are we... Uh, Increasing our um, carbon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sir, to provide your co host rights, you have to go back to the main meeting and then rejoin the session. All right. I'm sorry about it. So I'll, I'll leave it and then rejoin. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Really sorry about um, all that confusion. Let's see if now I can share the screen. And uh, the screen. All right. So there is still some problem with uh, sharing, but um, more or less we are good. I can share it tab by tab. Um, um, can you see the tab? Or am I booted out? All right, can you see the BBC six minutes on your, um, okay. <clears throat> Good, yeah. So um, you can see um, here, for example, so we'll start with podcasts since we've started with this. 
um, very interesting topics like how green is your money, mushrooms, medicine, or myth. Um, <clears throat> sounds that want to make you scream, saving dead languages, how fans talk about their passions, um, etc. It's a diverse um, <clears throat> kind of um, topics. I'm not playing them over here, but they are the, um, uh, six minute long uh, uh, audio stories, um, which are um, very interesting. As you can see, there's all kinds of topics that are covered over here. <clears throat> So, for example, let us click on saving dead languages over here. <clears throat> it tells you the level um, and there is, you can download the audio, you can download the PDF, you can download the entire podcast as well. And uh, there is uh, a vocabulary thing at the end of it, the <clears throat> important uh, <clears throat> words that have um, come up in the podcast, the missionary, Hethin, Topsy Toby, right the wrongs of the past, etc. <clears throat> Let's just read the introduction of this for example. Before the arrival of European settlers, Australia was home to more than 200 languages. Many of these have died out since, but some have now been brought back to life. Bangala is one of those. Neil and Phil discuss the revival of Bangala and teach you some useful vocabulary. And there's one week's question as well. So these are very, along with um, learning English as a language and its uses and good usage, you also learn a lot of um, uh, historical, anthropological, geographical, other uh, information as um, it should be. Um, so for example, here that we know that there are many languages uh, which are dying out uh, because of lack of use. Why is that? Because um, everything in the world world over is getting standardized and so smaller languages which very few people speak, especially in tribal groups, are dying out. Um, the history of Australia, I'll take a minute here to um, talk about the history of Australia. You would also have heard my introduction. I've spent some time in Australia. Is um, The population of Australia was roughly two crores in 1788 when the British invaded the island and nearly decimated the whole uh, uh, population. And so there were 200 languages as you can um, uh, see. And these people had lived on that island. I wish this was <coughs> an interactive class I could ask you, how many years do you think? So they had lived there for about um, 40,000 years, unstopped, unbroken. <clears throat> and in nearly 200 years now, we have lost all their knowledge of uh, <clears throat> medicine, of languages, of um, archery skills, of philosophical thought or whatever. So anyway, this is a good example of um, um, <clears throat> a, a podcast. So this is called BBC Six Minutes. As, uh, there was some internet problem. Um, so I was talking about BBC Six Minutes. And the next one I was um, telling you is um, Voice of America. <clears throat> oh, let's pick up anyone. Seems to be some internet problem, but so VOA um, is um, uh, this is another website that I want to show later. It's not out of syllabus, but um, it's 
internet is a little slow. All right, while the internet is slow, we can talk, innovate and talk about this. So this is uh, um, <clears throat> a website which is um, very good as a game for um, students, teachers alike. This is called um, yarn.co, Y-A-R-N dot um, C-O. <clears throat> So, um, <clears throat> any phrase that you've heard um, in a text or a movie, and you type that into yarn.co, it, it um, turns up <clears throat> all the videos that are compiled on this website. And these are like um, two or three seconds um, clip. So, for example, I uh, type a stitch in time saves nine. Okay. <clears throat> and um, there you go. So this is one of the idioms, as you know, a stitch in time saves nine. And so it will play. So this is a very fun learning. Jewel neckline. Don't you know stitch in time saves? Gives you the precise location. And so these can be used as um, um, memes. These can be used as GIFs. And um, uh, it can be a great uh, fun activity among students to talk about uh, what proverbs they know, what idioms they know in English, and type that out um, in a classroom or for yourself. And um, these results will come up. And this will also increase your knowledge of how it's how the usage is in different kinds of um, contexts. So <clears throat> that is Jan, but we were talking about podcast before this in which I wanted to talk about the Voice of America podcast. So you just have to type in, um, in Google VOA podcast. And this is uh, <clears throat> voice, the second one you see, the Voice of America Learning English Projects. So um, as you can see, they have um, one every day. For example, let's see. Okay, this is VOA one, the hits. So here you can see that. Um, Welcome to learning English. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they give a summary of what the podcast is about. On today's pod podcast, climate activists want a new chemical to be used in air coolers. The government's case against Google could change how people use search on internet, followed by a discussion about the report then what do you call it on lesson of the day so as you can see that um, uh, these are 30 minute podcasts cover three or four topics which are um, of uh, general uh, in, about general information about um, information that is useful uh, this case against google and then lesson of the day we should talk about grammar and this is uh, as teachers also this is the fun way to learn this is the best way to learn by integrating, by not uh, just making grammar lessons drab, but by integrating um, uh, topics of discussion, whatever would interest, whichever level of students it would, and we should also not underestimate students and, and the levels. So this, I would say, for example, um, is good for um, high school students. So these um, are two very good podcast um, sessions. Then there is one which is very useful called Listen a Minute. So these are just one minute long podcasts. This is very good for um, <clears throat> uh, classroom practice where um, uh, students can be made to listen to one minute podcasts and then you can ask comprehension questions all questions related to the topic um, <clears throat> with them. It's taking a while to load. All right. While it takes a while to load. Yeah. So <clears throat> there on your screen, um, listen a minute. You just have to type this out in Google and this will um, 
show up. Yeah. So as you can see, this has got a plethora of topics. Um, it's all alphabetically arranged. So A, B, C, and um, so on and so forth. As you can see, uh, let's see and see there's chickens, coffee, computers, cosmetic surgery, crime, all kinds of uh, <clears throat> things that concern uh, a modern reader, a student of the class. For example, let's take cyberbullying over here. And you can see they have a PDF. You can download the whole text of it as a Word file also. There's quiz and quiz. And uh, they have a summary as well. The internet can be a scary place, especially because of cyberbullying. It's difficult to open a newspaper and not see a story about this. So all very pertinent topics that concern us. And along with it, you learn good usage of language, how to integrate them into talking about topics of concern. So... <clears throat> So let's read the introduction over here. Cyber bullies are really real cowards. They hide behind their computer and scare people, send them hate mail or threaten them. Even worse is when they publish pictures of their victims online. So apart from um, good concise sentences, we see that these also cover topics wherein what is not generally talked about and um, especially in an age of um, internet where internet education is very important, there should be these topics like these. So they, they talk about pictures of victims online. This is something that would be hushed generally and nobody would want to talk about it. But if it's brought into these kind of topics are brought into the classroom, there's greater awareness, less lesser shame and taboo around things. And uh, so this is a very good resource um, for a listing of topics and having a class discussion about it. So, for example, in Edge, there's hacking, there's hate crimes, heart, heart attacks, all very useful things for students to learn and also discuss in the class. Right? Um, <clears throat> then there is also a very good podcast called Radio 4, which is also um, BBC, so you just have to type in Google. Radio 4 and it comes up. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as you can see here also there's a whole um, list of uh, interesting topics, the gift, slice bread, etc. <clears throat> and there's quizzes as well. And as you saw in the last one also in listen a minute, there were quizzes relating to um, the topics that we, um, let's say, Google, podcast about Google, so let's go to quiz. And these resources are free, so they're very good. You don't have to navigate through um, what is free and what is not free. Unfortunately, my internet is too slow today to work on these fast, but you get the um, drift of it. <clears throat> then, there's a couple of others which I'll run through very quickly. Um, uh, <clears throat> like there is KCRW Bookworm. Bookworm is uh, for teachers as well as high school students. Um, this has got um, interviews, um, it's got reviews of books, and it's a very good, um, so topics like these, the story of America, friends of Michael, the story of America part two, confederacy of bookworms, Nobel laureates, and all these, as you can see, are 29 um, uh, minutes. So it would uh, be very good for high school students to learn about who the Nobel laureates in literature um, have been in, let's say, two episodes, and so on and so forth. So this is also a very good resource um, for both history and literature and for uh, good comprehension skills. 
so all right these are some of the very good podcasts um, that one should know about um, uh, bbc's radio 4 bbc 6 minute book one that we saw listen a minute and you just need to google all these and you will get them all right let's look at other kinds of resources so one of the very interesting um resources is is ozdeck <clears throat> so this is um, ozdeck.com o z d i c .com <clears throat> so this is a co-location website okay Uh, a co-location um, website means how a word is used in uh, this gives you all the context the usage of the word how it's used as an adjective how it's used with a verb as an adverb etc etc so for example i had um, just finish talking about the uh, podcast so let's go back so this the next thing i'm going to talk about is a collocation um, uh, tool so collocation means how to locate a word within a context so uh, let's say the word word so how to use adjectives with the word word good word bad word so on so forth how to use it with the verb and so on so forth. so let me share Screen again. Uh, uh, yeah, the website is broken. Just a second. <clears throat> right now you can see it right <clears throat> so this is um, let me type the website over here for you it's called ozdick.com okay <clears throat> so as you can see um, you can enter a word over here and it gives you its uh, meaning how to use it and so on and so forth so i put in custom for example let's put word like redeem it's really slow but <clears throat> let me do one thing let me switch off my video maybe the speed of things will increase <clears throat> oh i can't if i stop my video it will stop sharing as well so that can be done <clears throat> so okay so for example uh, what we have on the screen over here is red so <clears throat> as you can see different kinds of um, um, usage of the word red of the color blood glow <clears throat> um, as as a verb the coals glowed red in the dying fire how to use it with verb as an adverb when the leaves um, looked slightly red as an adjective flaming red hair is a quality of and so on so forth as you can see that various uses of red are given over here so how to locate the word red within its context how to use it differently different uses and this is one of the biggest um, challenges that students face and sometimes teachers also face when they learn a new word they do not know what context to use it in you may have a good vocabulary but you may not know how to 
use it in different um, contexts and with different kinds of um, linguistic devices. Uh, so apart from <clears throat> just the word, as you can see, it also uses the phrasal noun, um, what a red tape is, and so on and so forth. So it's a very useful site for the usage, how to use a word or a phrase. Um, <clears throat> so this you should remember. Moving on, one of my favorite websites is um, itimonline.com. I'll give you an example very quickly. All right. So you can see on your screens, this tool is called Item Online. It's available as an app on phones as well as the website. All right. So what is Item Online? Etymology is the root of a word. So the root of a word is its history, where it's traveled from, how it's um, changed its roots, and so on and so forth. For example, if I told you that uh, Narangi and Orange have the same root, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe because they sound so different. Right? One is a word in Hindi and multiple Indian languages and um, the one is in English. But, so this was a project done in the 19th century by two um, mad people, a mad professor and a mad man, and then it carried on. Um, there's a very interesting movie called The Madman and the Professor also, which talks about how this history of English words was um, documented. So anyway, so for example, I was talking about orange and narangi and claiming that they are the same thing. Let's look at it. <clears throat> so you see, reference to the fruit of an orange tree from medieval... Pomum de orange, etc., etc. Italian Narancia, or originally Narancia, Venetian Naranza, an alteration of Arabic Naranj, from Persian Narang, from Sanskrit Naranga, a word of uncertain origin. So you see how <clears throat> um, fascinating um, this is um, as students of um, English that a word has trans transferred from an, an traveled from Sanskrit to Persian to Arabic to Italian to Latin to English to also in between French. So it's taken the whole trade route from India to the Middle East to Europe. Um, and the Naranga became Narhanya and the N got deleted and became silent and it became orange statue. So Item Online is a very useful website to understand words, words that you wonder why they are the way they are, but you cannot figure out why they are that way. And it gives you deep insights into, um, for example, some a word like spectacle, which means multiple things. It means aankho ka chashma, um, right? It means a sight, a tremendous sight to behold. So, for example, Spectacle mid 14th century public entertainment, specially prepared or arranged display. From spectacle, spectacle, Roman games, from Latin spectaculum, a public show. So, <clears throat> and originally it's from spectator to view, watch, behold. So, at the root, root of the whole thing is to watch and to behold. From the proto Indian European root of spec. Now you come to see how many words are related to this root spec. Aspect, auspects, auspices, auspicious, bishop, circumspect, conspicuous. There are about 50 words given over here which relate to the idea of seeing or watching. And if you have an idea through understanding etymologies, through the histories of words, if you understand the suffixes and prefixes, half your job as a learner of vocabulary is Done. You can guess a lot of words merely by seeing the spec, for example, um, in it and guessing if you have a multiple choice or generally in context also if you want to guess, you'll be able to guess their um, uh, meaning. 
as you can see inspection it's about seeing what is inspection surveying something it's about seeing so um, and so inspection would become inspector and so on and so forth and as you can see there are all kinds of words with varied meanings but you'll see that at the root of it there will always be the act of watching of speculation um, and speculation is also like looking into what cannot be seen okay? and um, uh, there's very uh, you know historical knowledge given about it that it originates probably from Western or from Sanskrit and how it gets into Greek and Latin and how so many English words are um, affected, uh, influenced by it now. So Item Online is a very interesting um, website that gives you, as an app also, that gives you uh, insights into the workings of language and its um, history and how to make good guesses um, regarding words. So apart from the podcast, we have seen two very interesting tools, Austic, which is about co-location of words, how to use them in context, and Item Online, which tells you about um, word histories. Now, um, let us look at um, something called Quillbot. Quillbot is a free tool, unlike most of the tools available online, like um, um, like Grammarly and others, which are paid tools, um, you can upgrade to premium in this, as you can see. But even the basic tool has a lot of stuff um, that can be put in over here. So <clears throat> this is um, basically a tool for um, checking plagiarism. For that, you need the premium. But for grammar checking, for paraphrasing, for summarizing, you can see um, that. Um, these are free. They can also be added as extensions. So let us write a grammatically bad um, sentence. Is went to his, and we'll also write the wrong spelling, and also miss the apostrophe. Let's see what it does. So let's go to the grammar checker. Oh, sorry. That was so. Uh... Hello? Sorry again about this internet. It looks like uh, what I was saying is not what was showing on the screen. So let's stop sharing and reshare. Then probably it'll come. Um, all right. Now I think you can see. <clears throat> so um, this is something called um, Quillbot um, and this has uh, different kinds of tools like I said this is uh, uh, premium version checks plagiarism etc which would be required for uh, <clears throat> the school administration stuff to check students papers but um, <clears throat> at a prelim level and uh, this is not really <clears throat> a tool for um, students because they need to learn the right usage but still uh, once you have written then to um, just check your uh, work there's a grammar checker there's a summer summarizer there's a paraphraser so let us write something wrong in this Um, so let's go with the 
grammar checker for example and let's write something wrong for example sunny is went to his friend's place he made multiple mistakes over here and now it says there's three mistakes let's fix the errors it puts the apostrophe it corrects the tense and so on and so forth so it's, it's quite a good tool to um, um, <clears throat> go through your essays and summarize them paraphrase them uh, get your grammar checked and so on and so forth grammarly of course is <coughs> the paid um, website the other tools as well all right um, now um, for speaking skills and for classroom discussions there are some interesting um, websites like there's the ESL discussion let me type that over here it's eseldiscussions.com <coughs> in a moment I'll share them screen with you so these are for um, classroom um, discussions uh, amongst um, students whereas uh, wherein there are discussion topics all arranged in alphabetical order from a to z and as you can see there are multiple um, um, kinds of as we have earlier seen with podcasts as well uh, there are multiple topics for discussion let's um, click on anyone let's say for example bicycles all right so as you can see this is a discussion on bicycles there's a pdf format there's a word format so basically this is 10 questions for student a and 10 questions for student b why is a bicycle called a bicycle which is for that you will have to go either to the dictionary or to back to itemonline.com <clears throat> How useful are bicycles? Do you think bicycles will be used more or less in future? What contribution has bicycle made to the world? Is your country a bicycle friendly country? And so on and so forth. As you can see that the questions are fundamental to um, uh, deep discussion, to political, to um, related to global warming and so on and so forth. Um, and students, these questions, as you can see, what are the advantages of a bicycle over a car? Um, have you ever used a monocycle? Do you think cyclists are dangerous, etc., etc.? So it covers a range of um, ideas and topics about a particular particular word, particular idea, um, and um, so as you can see, there's lots and lots of topics given for every, and so this is very good for class discussion. Um, once the questions are generated, and you can have a class discussion about it. For example, let's see one more about discrimination. And you can see the PDF over here. So let's try and generate a PDF of this. Right. Comes as this, and you can print it, save it. What is discrimination? What kinds of discrimination exists in your country? Do you ever have thoughts that are discriminatory? Which countries around the world have shocking levels of discrimination? Are there strong laws in your country to prevent discrimination? As you can see, the questions are very well designed to make students aware, not just of usage of English, but of um, various subjects of understanding geopolitics, of understanding issues like discrimination, of understanding values of equality, not falling into the trap of stereotypes, etc., etc. Um, <clears throat> personalized questions as well. Have you ever been discriminated against? Have you ever discriminated against people? So these are very good provocative questions for students to make them think in the class as a class as a group as, as teamwork to think about um, topics like these which are generally not talked about or brushed aside 
Okay, so that is esldiscussions.com. Um, we have already um, discussed um, the website for movies called yarn.co, but I'll just show you that um, once again. So this was esldiscussions.com. And the other tool I was showing you earlier was yarn.co. Maybe the internet is running good enough to for a demo of it. Just a second. Right, so this is the um, movie website I was telling you about that you write a phrase. And it will show you where all it's been used and in three second clips, four second clips. <clears throat> so for example, here you are under arrest. A phrase like this. You are under arrest. So it shows you whatever is there in its um, um, database. So I was showing you earlier a proverb. Um, let's, let's take it. Any idiom, any proverb, like um, like we were seeing a stitch in time saves nine. You see a list of all the movies in which this phrase has been used in different contexts, and this increases your knowledge about movies as well as how a certain um, phrase is used. All right. So um, I think I'll stop over here. That's a lot of um, um, tools. I'm sorry about the internet connection, but if there are any questions about any of these things or generally any other questions as well, um, you're most welcome to um, participate so we can quickly have a discussion. Thanks. Anyone has any questions, any points of discussion, anything you didn't understand, anything you would like me to cover? So um, shall we end this session then? Great. Thank you. Um, thank you very much and look forward to seeing you again and with lesser internet glitches next time. Thanks a lot.